Neil Patwari, I'm going to talk about Shannon's source coding theorem. And the theorem says that a source with entropy rate h can be encoded with arbitrarily small error probability at any rate r greater than h. Conversely, if r is less than h, the error probability will be bounded away from zero independent of the encoder and decoder employed. Okay, so you can imagine a source coding system that has an encoder and has a decoder at the receiver and we get bits out that correspond to the data that was sent. If the bits don't match the ones that were sent, that is an error. So an error is whenever these bits don't match with these bits and the error rate or error probability would be the probability that any particular bit doesn't match. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say error probability. The rate r is the data rate. The units would be bits per sample. If we have a source that is sending uh, samples from transmitter to receiver, in Shannon's paper that you had assigned to you for today, it calls it a source output. It's saying that the source say a um, microphone outputs certain values and that's why it's calling it a source output but we're we're calling it a sample because it's a word we use more often if we're talking about audio for example we might have a rate a sampling rate that rate would be some value that would be that would have units of samples per second Multiplying the sampling rate beta with the r that has bits per sample would cancel out the units of sample and would have units of bits per second. And that's the typical way we think of a data rate in terms of bits per second. So we talk about the sampling rate multiplied by this particular rate. This rate r has to be greater than the entropy rate, which we defined and talked about an example for in the previous segment. Okay, so the trade-off with this source coding theorem, and Shannon goes through this idea of typical sequences, which he defines in his, in his paper, and that allows him to prove that as n goes to infinity, that you can encode this data with this entropy rate r greater than h with an arbitrarily small error probability. Okay, so what's the problem with n going to infinity. Well, n is the number of samples that we use when we encode the data. So we encode them together, like we talked about in the entropy rate case. When we look at data that is correlated, we need lots of samples together to reduce that average entropy per sample down to the entropy rate. And the problem with that is that as n goes to infinity, my latency goes higher and higher. So my latency is proportional to n because I have to wait until I get n samples in order to encode them. So for example, if I was sending audio at 44 kilosamples per second and I had capital N be 44 kilosamples, then I would need to wait one second in order to encode the data and then I wouldn't receive it until even later than that. So my latency would be more than one second. In some applications, audio that's a second delayed, for example, on Zoom, that would not be acceptable. It might be acceptable for YouTube because YouTube has uh, is not a, sending you a real-time video for this for this segment. So it might be okay that the encoding took a long time. This theorem doesn't tell you what the error rate would be if we had a finite latency. This is still an unanswered question. It also doesn't tell you how to do it. It doesn't tell you how to implement an encoder that, that achieves this arbitrarily small error probability. but it tells you that it is possible. That's the source coding theorem by Shannon. It effectively tells us that when you come up with the entropy rate,
it allows you to have a lower bound on the data rate for your communication system in order for it to be reliable.